RealLifeCulture.com presents Under the Microscope with BioVision Seed Labs. I'm Lindsay Smith with RealAgriculture.com. I'm joined today by Sydney Voss. Now, Sydney, you are with BioVision Seed Labs, but this is kind of a new, a new gig, and we've never had you here at Under the Microscope. So welcome here. Thank you. And now, how long have you had uh, this new position with BioVision? I have been with BioVision for the last month. All right. So this is very new and very exciting. Also new but less exciting is what we're going to talk about today, which is aphanomyces which yes. I joked that we would have a bouncing ball that would tell you how to actually pronounce this. Uh, so what is the correct pronunciation of this disease? It's a phatomyces. Okay, and so what is this? Because uh, some people have heard about it, but it's still pretty new. Yes, so phatomyces has been a bit of an issue in Western Canada the last couple of years. Um, it's not really known to Western Canada. It's been more of an issue in Europe and the American Midwest in their pulse crops. But because of the last couple of years having a lot of moisture and wet, soggy soils, there's definitely been an increase in this disease. And researchers are working on it right now to quantify how many fields there are and just how big this is. And so now it, so it's a, a water-loving disease, uh, which, you know, of course, a lot of seedling blights are, uh, but it, it does it only attack pulse crops? So peas, lentils, chickpeas, pretty much? For the most part, the data is a little bit fuzzy, I guess, when it comes to that. There's uh, kind of varying reports on what crops it does attack, but for the most part, we've seen it in lentils and peas in Western Canada. Okay, and so now this is a bit of an interesting one because we don't actually test the seed for aphanomyces, we actually test soil or uh, a root tissue. So um, if farmers say we're considering putting pulses in, is this a test that they should do or how would they decide if they need to go out and do that soil sample? So basically when you're out scouting your field, you're gonna wanna look for the yellowing plants that have kind of the more caramel colored roots. The issue with this particular disease is that it actually opens up the plant to other secondary infections such as uh, Fusarium, Pythium, Rhizoctonia. And so often the symptoms can actually be of those secondary infections. So it can be a little bit difficult to scout for, but definitely send us in the root tissue so that we can determine definitely whether or not it's a phanomyces in your field. That's for the in-season scouting. If you're looking to do some kind of fall scouting or early spring scouting, just in case you're worried about having a phanomyces in your field and you're looking at your rotations and whether you want to put a pulse in, that would be a good time to scout and to send in soil samples. So how much soil do you need to run the test at BioVision? So we recommend sending us about two cups of soil for the soil test and for the root tissue, it can be a couple of roots. We don't need the whole plant, so you can just send in the roots and we recommend that you courier them overnight just so that they don't degrade kind of over the weekend or something like that. And how long does the test take? So standard turnaround for us is seven to 10 days. We can do a rush if that's requested. Um, basically, we can send you soil testing containers and sample bags if you would like those. And then, yeah, seven to 10 days is our turnaround. Yeah. Okay. And so now, um, as you said, a lot of the symptoms might actually be more recognizable root rots, but that's, they are actually the secondary infection. So anyone who's got a lot of die off from a root rot might want to be testing for this. Now, yeah. there's no treatment, I'm assuming, after you find this. So what happens if you do have it? So there are no chemical control methods out there for um, broad acre scale. There was a recent emergency registration by the PMRA on a new farm product. Um, so it, has a, it says it has a 50% suppression rate of aphanomyces. And so in terms of other control products, um, there's basically nothing available for large scale. Uh, researchers are working on it right now, um, but that's still something kind of far off in the future. Okay, and of course, um, this, is a, this is a water loving disease. So yes. in a dry year, if it's there, would you still necessarily see the impact of it? Does it really need that water to spread and, and be viable? Yes, so it is a water mold. It does spread through soil and water transfer. 
Um, if it is a dry year, you're not likely to see the symptoms express themselves in the plant. It's like a lot of diseases where you have the disease triangle, it's the host, the pathogen, and the environment. So the conditions really do need to be conducive for that plant to, to really be susceptible to it. Okay, now it does stick around though for quite a long time. So does crop rotation still play a role in controlling this? I mean, obviously this isn't a super widespread disease or as, as you know, maybe serious as say club root or something like that. But um, is it still, if you know you have it in your fields, should you be stretching your rotations? Uh, yes, so aphanomyces can stick around for up to 10 years, they found. And so doing crop rotation is gonna be key in that. It's also really going to depend, like I said, on the environmental conditions um, and how, well, how far it spreads um, year to year as well. So yeah, definitely crop rotation, um, doing pulses back to back if you know if you have phanomyces can possibly be an issue. So Okay, so if you're out there scouting and you're seeing a lot of skips, misses, dying off plants, it's time to maybe send them in and, and get that test done. So, okay, so if you're out scouting and you're seeing skips, misses, dying off plants, or you're suspecting uh, root rots, not a bad idea to send it in and figure out which root rot is at play here. So um, now how many plants should farmers send in if they're, if they're out scouting? You can send in a couple plants. Um, for scouting and for sending in uh, samples, you want to look at kind of the lower areas of the field, obviously, because it does like water. So doing kind of a pattern where you pick a few areas that are lower and looking suspect is definitely a good way to pick samples. Okay, wonderful. Thanks so much, Sydney. Thank you, Lindsay.